everybody, Bob Scheffler from Precom Design. Welcome to Bob's Bench. Today we're going to talk about uh, our Dream Switcher products. Dream Switchers are used, um, can be connected to a Dream Player or really any other control source. Um, we have a switcher for audio switching, which takes audio input and switches it to four separate outputs. We also have a power switcher. The power switcher actually takes the control inputs and uses them to control the four relays and we expose all of the contacts of the relays on separate terminal strips. So not only the normally open, but also the normally closed contacts on those uh, relays. So let's go on to the bench and have a look. So the Dream Power Switcher is useful for all kinds of applications. Um, our, our audio switcher pretty much was designed for switching audio only. So we take a line level audio input and then route it with the four relays to one of the four audio outputs here. Problem with this configuration is that people asked us um, how they could wire this to control other things such as um, DCC blocks, um, routing speakers as opposed to routing line level audio. And so we came out with the Dream Power Switcher. The Power Switcher is effectively the same board, except that instead of having the audio output jacks, it actually has terminal strips instead. These terminal strips expose all of the contacts from the relays. Um, each of these relays is actually a double pull, double throw relay, which means there's a common, a normally closed, normally open, a second common, and a second normally open, and a second normally closed. So that's six total contacts uh, per relay. Um, and because we have four relays, we've actually got four completely separate terminal strips here. Um, so these are the output sections for the, uh, for the relays. To control the relays, we have an input terminal strip. We call it the control inputs. On the control inputs, we have four screws or four terminals for the four relays, and then also power, five volts, preferably power, that comes in to power the relays. So each one of these four control inputs actually syncs or connects to ground in order to turn the relay on. When the relay is energized, any of these control inputs are completely isolated away from the contacts on the output side. So you could control um, AC powered accessories, um, some of these small animated figures, um, lights in your uh, buildings, um, you could control um, sirens or, or pretty much anything that can be controlled with a relay contact. Um, the coil on these relays is rated for 5 volts so we really would like to see 5 volts coming into it. 6 volts should be fine but you don't really want to hook up 12 volts or anything like that to it. Um, the contacts are rated for um, somewhere around an amp or two. Um, they're marked as 1 amp 24 volt DC um, but you know we've, we've seen them be okay up to a couple amps. Um, you probably would not want to control um, high current AC lighting with these relays. Um, they're really not designed for that. Um, but this relay can control an external solid state relay uh, for that purpose. Um, so anyway, that is a pretty quick overview. Board's slightly larger than two inches um, tall and is three and a half inches wide with convenient mounting screws so, or mounting holes so that you can actually mount this on your layout with a couple of screws or mount it into a project box, or mount it underneath you know, a museum display or anything like that. So we're going to take a little bit closer look at a demo that we have here um, to kind of illustrate normally open and normally closed um, with four push buttons here. To simply demonstrate uh, the normally open and normally closed functions of the Dream Power Switcher, um, we wired up kind of a little test board here. Um, we've got red LEDs representing the normally closed um, contacts of the relay, and then green LEDs to represent the normally open. So whenever I press one of these buttons, it's actually going to change from normally closed to normally open as the relay is energized. So you can see it just switches back and forth. Um, very, very, uh, therapeutic sometimes to just be able to push the buttons and play. This is kind of fun actually, clicking and blinking. Um, but getting slightly more serious, 
what we're doing is we're taking 5 volts DC, we're bringing it into the control input. That 5 volts is what powers the four relays. That 5 volts we're also running around with this red wire on, uh, into the common terminal of one of the relay contacts. You can see there's three wires attached. There's a common, normally open, normally closed. So we're just going to bring that 5 volts kind of all the way around and feed it into each of the four relays on the first common um, contact. For each one of those four relays, we've got an orange and a red wire. The orange wire represents the normally closed contact, indicated by the red LED. And then the red wire is running down here to the green LED. Um, in hindsight, I suppose we probably should have used a red wire for the red LED, maybe even a green wire for the green LED, but uh, that's just what we had laying around on the bench. So as I push this button, it's going to energize this relay right here, relay number one. And when relay number one turns on or is energized, it will switch the common terminal from the normally closed contact to the normally open contact. And you can see that my LED lights. Underneath we do have a current limiting resistor for each of the LEDs so that the 5 volts DC power does not go directly into um, the LED itself. We've got a little current limiting resistor there. Um, and that's how it works. To control the relays, you can see the yellow wires across the top. The yellow buttons attached to the yellow wires, which wire to each one of the four control inputs on the terminal strip. And by pushing one of the buttons, I'm actually connecting that input to the black wire across here. The black wire is the ground, and then the ground wire comes around and attaches to the ground of my power supply, as well as um, the black wire you can see going out and down to my buttons. Um, that ground is also where the LEDs sear their ground. So you can see the resistors are actually wired to that black wire as well. So simply switching the, the uh, relay back and forth changes my red LED to my green LED. And you can hear it clicking actually if I push the button really quietly. You can hear the relays clicking. And that's, that's basically um, all we're doing here to demonstrate. Of course you can imagine there's lots of applications where you could use a normally open and a normally closed contact on a switcher such as this. Um, in modern rail railroading, a tortoise switch machine um, actually uh, can be, the polarity can be reversed quite easily by using the two, the two uh, contacts in the relay or the two terminals in the relay um, and cross wiring them. And we'll probably do an application video about how to wire that up um, in the future. And so that's a quick overview of the Dream Power Switcher and kind of a little fun application example here of how to, how to wire up relays and normally open and normally closed. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what the Dream Switchers can do. Um, not only the audio, but also the power switcher. Um, please keep an eye on our website at pricom.com and uh, look forward to seeing you again on Bob's Bench.